I've been helping people design and build their own climate batteries around the world for over five years now. I'm going to do a quick series of videos explaining how they work and put a lot of the key information into this video series to help people on their own journey of growing local produce. This video is going to be just a quick foundational introduction to climate batteries. Climate batteries are a technology for greenhouses or high tunnels that store the excess heat energy accumulated during the daytime in the ground below the structure to utilize at night for heating. During the daytime, air blows into a grid of tubes embedded in the ground. As the air flows through those tubes, the heat passes from the air into the ground around the tubes. Then at night, the air flows in the same direction, but moves the heat from the ground into the growing space. The ground will typically be warmer than a system without a climate battery and warmer than the ground temperature outdoors. The terminology surrounding these heat storage systems is really confusing because there are so many names for the same thing. These names all mean the same, but have different origins and tend to be used by different types of people. So the first category here we're going to talk about is growers and permaculture uh, folks. They'll tend to call these climate batteries, uh, which is the term that I'm going to use because I'm mostly making this for growers. This was originally popularized by Jerome Osentowski of the Rocky Mountain Permaculture Group. That's a, a good name that's easy to understand and it's widely adopted in North America. Another term is SHCS or subterranean heating and cooling. Uh, this is also common in the DIY and off-grid greenhouse literature, uh, mostly before the climate battery term became popular. In the engineering and HVAC field, these are often referred to as GAHX or GAHT, pronounced GAT, uh, ground to air heat exchangers. This is uh, the most widely accepted technical term for these systems. It stresses the airflow going through the ground pipes, uh, but GAT was trademarked by Ceres Greenhouse Solutions in 2016, so I usually avoid that terminology. Uh, another common term in literature is EAHX, which is maybe hard to pronounce. Uh, but stands for earth to air heat exchanger, kind of a similar thing going on. Uh, it's a broader term used in passive house and building ventilation design systems. And then these are also sometimes called the ground coupled air heat exchanger, which is maybe a, a more technical term. Uh, researchers and academia field also have their own series of names that tend to be used in literature. So one is the UTS, underground thermal storage. It's used by some researchers and growers with technical backgrounds and it it's nice because it emphasizes the battery-like aspects of it for storing that heat energy. Then we have the EAHE, Earth to Air Heat Exchanger, and Soil Heat Storage System, and Thermal Banking. And all of these things make it really confusing and can make it difficult to find information. And then when you do find research papers or publications about things, you don't know if you're, they're quite talking about the same thing as what you're looking for or not. So hopefully this guide helps. You can always come back to this and reference these different names and see if it's the same thing or not. Now, another system that's often confused with climate batteries is the earth tube, which also uses a series of buried pipes. But it has a key differentiator in that the tubes are located outside the structure in an uninsulated trench. It can have many purposes. Sometimes it's used for cooling in warm climates or for low level heating in cold climates, it is not typically used for heat storage. So here's a couple examples of earth tube systems. This one here is an experimental project from the University of Connecticut that they did a few years ago. And this one here is the common system used by the citrus in the snow greenhouses that consists of piling a whole bunch of tubes here in a, a single fairly deep trench. Now the key thing here is that these are using the natural existing temperature of the earth, not storing heat within it, trying to increase it. So I'm going to be doing a series of videos, four videos to be exact, on the different main parts of a climate battery system, and hopefully answer a lot of the questions that folks have with some nice visuals to make these things clear. So the first section we're going to talk about is the heat storage system, which consists of the storage medium and a thermal barrier to keep the heat within that system once you get it stored. Then we're going to talk about the heat exchanger pipes, which are essential to moving the heat energy from the air into the ground. Then we're going to talk about manifolds and 
fans. So we have a manifold, usually some kind of a tube system to distribute the air to the heat exchanger with a fan to move that air into that pipe. And then of course, once you have that, you need to have thermostats and controls to move that air in at the right time and to move the heat out when you want it. Tune in later for the next video where I'm going to delve deep into the heat storage system itself and talk about the thermal barriers and the storage medium choices that you have. This video was funded in part by USDA's South Dakota Specialty Crop Block Grant. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I'd also love to know your thoughts. Comment down below and let's chat. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for more content like this.